Hi, welcome to another Species Spotlight. Today's spotlight is going to be about the turquoise in parakeets. The turquoisine parakeet is also known as the turquoisine parrot or a grass keet or grass parakeets or the turquoisine grass parrot or simply some people just call them turks. The turquoisine parakeet is a species of parrot in the genus Neofema. The scientific name is Neofema puchella. Turquoisines are native to Eastern Australia and they spend most of their day on the ground foraging in the grasslands and open woodlands where they eat grasses, grass seeds, insects, flowers, plants and any vegetable matter. And they are usually seen in pairs or in small flocks of up to 30 birds. Other types of grass parakeets are the elegant parakeet, the scarlet chested parakeet, the rock parakeet, the orange bellied parakeet, the blue ring parakeet, and the bork parakeet. However, the bork parakeet recently got put into its own genius, but the bork parakeet is still considered a grass parakeet. And the reason they're called grass parakeets is because they do spend their day in the grasses searching for foods. Now in the wild, the grass parakeet is mostly green. It's mostly green, but they have a beautiful, especially the males, they have a beautiful turquoise head. They have a head and a face. That's why they're called turquoisines is because of the turquoise head. And they have deep blue flight feathers. They have, they might have a little bit of turquoisine on their, on their wings a little bit. The males, they have a red chestnut patch on their upper wing. And um, they have a little bit of yellow under their belly. And the males can have a little tinge of orange on their chest. The females though, however, are very um, more um, dull in color and they lack the chestnut marking on their upper wing. And the females can have like whitish around their lores, which is generally right around their beak. You know, just right around the base of the beak and where the eyes are, just in this area. That's called the lores. And the females generally, like the natural color of green, will have white around there and just be duller in color. The males are more vibrant and so beautiful. They're both beautiful, but the males, you know, they stand out because of their beautiful color and their beautiful turquoisine head. Now in the pet trade, there are many color mutations, such as the red-breasted turquoisine, like Starfire here. This is Starfire, my turquoisine. She's a red-breasted turquoisine. And then you got the full-breasted uh, red turquoisine. There's cinnamon, there's opaline, there's lutino, more like the yellow series. Some have a lot more red, some might have a little bit more blue. But you know, as the, the years go on, breeders breed them for different colors. Yeah, but the yellow series are the most uh, popular in the pet trade. So this is Starfire, my turquoisine. Look at her nice, beautiful tail. She's a beautiful red-breasted turquoisine. And she just turned one on May the 1st. Now she's sitting my, on my finger because she was hand-raised. She was hand-fed and handled as a baby. And that's why she doesn't mind to stay on my finger. Now I've had other turquoisines in the past. I've had um, maybe three or four of them. And um, she's actually been the tamest. I had another one, she was pretty tame. But the other ones didn't really stay tame. But anyways, they're all beautiful. I had a regular colored um, female and the other ones were just like her. Well, one was actually opaline and the other two were just like her. Right now I will describe the turquoisine parakeet. As you can see, they're very beautiful. And they are around eight inches from the beak to the tip of the tail and their average weight is around 50 grams. And the average lifespan is between 10 to 15 years. They do have short legs and they have small feet with a small little beak and a small head. Their head is pretty small compared to their body. They are quiet, they're non-destructive unless they have an aviary with plants in it, they will chew up the plants. 
but they don't really chew on wood you know or, or your blinds or anything like that they're not really big chewers as their beak is very small but they do like to chew on plant matter so that would be the only issue but you can provide them with plants to actually chew on that are safe for birds and they are gentle lively and a joy to have around and they can bond with their owner especially if you get them as juveniles and even better if they are hand raised hand fed and interacted with on a daily basis but generally the uh, turquoises are considered an avery bird and um, some say you know even though they're hand raised or hand tamed they may revert back to like a wild state of the bird like where they don't want human interaction but look at her she's okay she turned out okay so it really depends on the individual bird just like any bird that you raise you can raise you know budgies any kind of parrot and you have a clutch of birds and there's there's some that will love human interaction and some that won't even though they were hand raised so it is kind of like an individual thing but overall a lot of people say the turquoise makes a better pet has an avery hands-off bird and their call their call is very uh, pleasant to listen to it's very quiet it's not loud at all they're not screamers they don't constantly scream and they, they're not constantly making noise they have like these sounds that are like like, like little twitters or warbling sounds they have like a call as well that's a little bit more high pitched but it ain't that high pitched it won't like hurt your eardrums or your neighbors won't hear your birds um, you know they're very suitable for apartments or for where if you don't want a lot of noise they're they're not noisy birds at all I love them and they're very pleasant sounding and pleasant birds to be around and they are not known to be talkers or to mimic any sounds but you never know they say that about the uh, Borg parakeets and one of mine can copy my whistle and one of them can say a word he says give me a kiss so I mean if you just have a couple of birds and you spend a lot of time and talk to them all day you never know but they are not known for talking or you know mimicking any sounds so how are turquoises has pets well they need a lot of room a lot of space they need a huge fly cage or an aviary or at least a lot of free uh, time to be flying out of their cage they shouldn't have just a small cage of course they need a flight cage which is wider right you don't want a short one and a tall one they need to be wide because they do fly uh, back and forth so they do need a lot of space either an aviary or a large flight cage or if you have a flight cage and you can let them out like in your bird room like I do she's not even in a cage all day she basically sleeps and eats in there and comes out and she's free to fly around my bird room all day as they should be um, they're not considered you know to be birds that want to just sit still um, and that's why they're considered flight uh, flight flighted birds because they need to they're active and they need to always move and they need to fly but if you clip their wings um, it's similar to, though, to like the Borg parakeet you shouldn't really clip their wings they need their flight feathers so they can fly back and forth if they can't fly back and forth they're gonna have to climb all over right and their beak is so small that um, they can only fit um, in small you know little bars to climb with but it's not fair to the bird um, that's what they enjoy doing the most is to fly so they need a big space um, they like to shred toys uh, her favorite is shredding some and chewing some shredding toys and you know and plants or plant matter they like swings and they like to fly back and forth to different uh, you know perches and different sizes and different textures of, of perches they like when you hang some a little bit of a piece of a, a spray millet they like to hang you know hang upside down and grab millet or just you know sit on a perch and grab the millet but um, they will also like some uh, budgie sized toys but I think they prefer the shredding toys so they can actually chew them but she does like a little bit of the budgie toys that I, I always give them an option of you know what they can have and give them an option so they might like some budgie toys or the shredding toys but they should always have something to chew on they always need something to chew on and the females especially need a cuddle bone there is a mineral bone you can give them wood or fresh branches um, that they can chew on or soft wood wooden toys um, that they can chew on just to keep them active and keep their beak in shape 
it's really beautiful to see them fly. They don't fly like, you know, some other birds. They almost fly like a butterfly, kind of like fluttery, but they do these quick, you know, directionally like erratic little flights and they just go boom, 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 boom. And um, it's, it's really nice, it's beautiful to see. And so anyways, you gotta see them fly, it's really beautiful. So Starfire's cage is about 25 uh, inches wide with 21 inches deep, but she is only in there to sleep or eat, and she is out in my bird room all day with all my other birds where she can fly and land on all the perches and boings and um, take a bath or eat um, some fresh foods that are out on top of my cages. And um, so it's best to provide them with a lot of flying and uh, landing and foraging and bathing opportunities. And the turquoise and parakeet doesn't do well in a small cage. Again, you know, in a small, one of those budgie canary size cages, you don't want to get a turquoise and parakeet, you know, clip their wings and, and, and put them in a small cage. <laughs> That's going to lead to depression and possibly death. It's not very healthy for them at all. So I don't recommend you doing that. Even, you know, don't even clip their wings. Even if you have a flight cage and you clip their wings, it's, they're not going to be happy at all. Keep their flight feathers, you can target train them, you can train them, or just keep them as a hands-off bird and watch them fly and forage and have a good time. And that way they will be happy. You have to do what's best for the bird to keep them happy. And turquoise and parakeets uh, love to bathe daily, so it's best to provide them with a bathing opportunity. I find that she loves to bathe in um, shallow dishes, like, you know, a pipe plate size. And she actually does like the shower as well. She likes my bird fountain where there's running water. And um, they like that, so they might like to bathe like in your sink or just some kind of fountain that you can provide them with. Um, I never really tried to mist her because she does bathe, but um, I'm sure that if you have a turquoise and parakeet, you offer them water and they will go in and take a bath. And it's really interesting to see them bathe as they kind of just, you know, flop their wings and they almost looks like they're going backwards. They bathe differently than, um, you know, say a budgie would or any other bird. Um, they have their own specific way to bathe and it's really beautiful to see. Turquoiseans can be happy as a single pet, especially if they're hand raised and they're tame and you can interact with them on a daily basis. And they're happy as a single pair. Male turquoiseans can be aggressive with other male turquoiseans, especially during hormone like breeding time. They can be aggressive with the males and they'll fight. If you got um, some males, you might have to separate them so they don't hurt each other. And if they do breed and they get babies, the, the fathers can be aggressive with the male babies. So you have to watch out for that as well and separate them once the babies are weaned and fledged. Now they are content living in a, an aviary with other peace loving small birds or you know if you had them as pets you have other birds and they're caged alone but you let them out together like i have a bird room and all my birds are small peace loving birds so they all get along and starfire here is fine with my flock I don't recommend you mixing them with large parrots as you know the beak issues with the large beak, the small beak, the, um, the big parrots, they can just uh, bite your, your turquoiseine just like that and then you know you won't have a turquoiseine anymore. So don't mix you know big birds with small birds, it's not a good idea and I don't recommend you putting them in a cage, especially if it's just a cage or a flight cage for them. Don't you know put other birds in with them but they can, they can come out you know with them and spend time because the bigger the area, the bigger the room, they have a chance to get away from each other. But in a cage setting, if it's you know small, they can't get away. They're in a cage so they chase each other until they hurt each other or possibly kill each other, which obviously nobody wants. Turquoiseans in the wild will nest in hollows of trees, but in captivity they will nest in nest boxes suitable for like the budgie size or the cockatiel and nest box. They will uh, go in there and have their babies and the incubation for the eggs is about 18 days and the hen can lay about four to seven eggs. 
All right, so what does a turquoise -ean parakeet eat? Well, in the wild, they eat over 60 different foods and a lot of different grass seeds. In captivity, we have to give them a variety of food and enrichment so they can thrive. And what I feed my turquoise -eans is I give her a lot of fresh foods. A lot of fresh foods, I give them a chop mix, basically it's a, you know, chopped up vegetables, grains, and legumes. And um, along, I give her uh, canary seeds with a cockatiel mix. I mix it together. She gets the Golden Feast Australian mix. Um, she actually gets two kinds of pellets. She likes the Supreme uh, Canary size pellets and the tops, um, the mini size, the tops pellets. She's a really good eater. For a small bird, they actually eat a lot. So you have to give a variety to all of your birds, any kind of birds. They can't just eat just you know one seed and that's it and don't give them anything else. So a lot of fresh foods and even insects. You can give mealworms or if you want to go ahead and give them other insects that they eat. I've only tried eating uh, me mealworms. I haven't given them any other bugs, but um, you know, you can look into that and give them some bugs for some protein because that's what they eat in the wild as well. They were eating small bugs that are in the grasses. I also offer her a uh, spray millet. She gets a small piece. I don't give her a whole one because they would just eat the whole thing and that's kind of a fatty you know treat for them you can use it for training and taming and i usually give it to her at night uh, so she'll go in her cage to sleep uh, you know make the piece that spring it as long you just make you know break it in half and give her a small piece and she knows that she's going to get that and so she'll go into her cage to eat that for a bedtime snack and I find the turquoise is more active in the morning, in the evening, especially when they're eating. They're very active and they kind of twitter away while they're eating. And they're more like sedentary um, during the day at other times. Sometimes she'll just sit there for hours on end, have a nap, and then she's very active and will do her stuff. But um, similar to the Borg parakeet, um, where they're more active in the evening um, and in the morning. And kind of, you know, in the daytime, they're kind of like chilled out. Are turquoise -eans interactive? Well, they can be, but um, basically they don't preen each other. Similar to the bork again, they don't preen each other, alloprene each other, and I find they don't like to be petted. They don't like to be, you know, their cheek rub like say a cockatiel or sometimes even budgie would, but cockatiels love to be petted. They don't like to be petted. They don't like to be touched. They like to, you know, sit on you, sit on your finger, sit on your shoulder, and land on your head, or just be near you. So if you're looking for a cuddly bird, the turquoise is not for you. But if you're looking for a nice, quiet, a calm, a bird that will sit with you or sit near you and just twitter away and be, you know, beautiful to watch and interact with, you know, flying and eating and all that, then the turquoise might be for you, especially if you're in an apartment or, you know, you don't like a lot of noise, they will make some noise, of course. And, um, but I find them to be a really nice little bird. Now, health-wise, well, they can get any disease that any bird can get. But if you, if you have an outdoor aviary where they're outdoors, um, because they're considered a ground birds, like grass keats, they're always in the grass, they can pick up parasites. But an indoor bird, obviously well, they wouldn't have that problem. A lot of um, outdoor birds need to be um, dewormed. And um, that's only if you're outside or treated for um, any parasite. But other than that, they generally just get, they can get any disease that any bird can get. The turquoise parakeet's droppings are very small. They're almost similar to a budgie's droppings or a bork's droppings, so they're not huge, they're not really messy, but they do eat a lot of, you know, fresh food, so that makes it a little bit more, you know, bigger and wet, but it's not, uh, I find them pretty neat, clean birds. They're not dusty, like a cockatiel would be, or a cockatoo. They're pretty clean birds, and as I was saying, they're not really destructive, so they're not gonna chew everything up. Although she does, she's a female, so females do like to chew, you know, their paper. If they got the paper in the bottom of the cage, she does that. She's chewing her paper and chews her shredding toys, which is normal for a bird, and it keeps them busy. But overall, their droppings are, are pretty small and very, you know, easy to maintain, to clean up. We just wipe it up with a Kleenex or a paper towel. And, you know, they go as often as a, a budgie would go, you know, maybe every 15 to 20 minutes they'll go to the wash, and maybe more, depending on their and their uh, how they eat and their system but you know a little they're birds and they do poop a lot but uh, it's not as bad as say like a linolated parakeet they have really big uh, poops and um no i find i find them their poops kind of manageable 
I do have a playlist of other species spotlight. I'll put the link down below in the description and check out all my other links. There's other videos down there and my Amazon store for all your uh, pets needs and birds especially. And so I hope you enjoy my video and let me know what you think of the turquoise parakeet. Let me know if you have any and, and what color and how many you have or if you're thinking about getting a turquoise parakeet. So I will see you in the next video. Would you like to say bye? She's so pretty.